Hello, and welcome to our show for the love of animals. We're so glad you joined us today. If you're a quilter or a craft lover, we have a very special show for you. So get your paper and pencil so you can get some valuable information. I'm Darlene Pickford. And I'm Greg Bauer. And uh, we uh, want to welcome our two guests today, since you've already told us what the show is going to be oh, about. Oh, well, I didn't tell you in <laughs> detail, though, Greg. <laughs> well, anyway. What's our upcoming shows before well, we get started, Greg? Well, we're going to have a show on um, uh, pet cancers. Okay. And also one on pet allergies. Oh, so okay. So we'll be visiting the vet, eh? Yes, exactly. <laughs> those will be coming up, so stay tuned for those. But, but what today... We, today we have some quilts. Oh, we have quilts for animal lovers. There are many mm -hmm. quilts here in Paducah from the uh, our quilt museum, but we're going to zero in on those that have animal themes. So e exactly. Let's introduce our guest, Greg. Well, and to Darlene's um, immediate left, as you look at them, is Judy Schwender who is the curator and registrar of the National Quilt Museum from here in Paducah. And on Judy's right is Becky Glasby, who is the director of education for the National Quilt Museum. And these two have been with us before and have always done such a wonderful job. We just want to keep We just keep them coming, bringing them back, don't we? <laughs> and they have a wonderful set of things for us to look at today. And for those of you who might be viewing us for the first time, here in Paducah, we do have the National Quilt Museum. Judy, tell our viewers briefly a little bit about the museum. Well, the museum was started in 1991 uh -huh. by Bill and Mary the Schrader. And it's exciting because next year we'll celebrate our 25th anniversary. Oh! So, we're serious about quilts. Oh, I know you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm not a quilter, but I'm a serious looker. I've been there so many times. And we have in our collections over 500 quilts. So mm -hmm. there's always something new to see. Mm -hmm. And you rotate the quilts in the museum? On an ongoing basis, yes. Mm -hmm. And we do have loaned exhibits. So if it's not in our collection, you'll get a chance to see something new from somewhere else. I know. Okay. I've seen some Japanese quilts, and I, I mm -hmm. mean, some that. I just sat there in awe of, so I'm, I'm a real supporter of our quilt museum here in Paducah, Kentucky. And tell us a little bit about the quilt blocks. It's a contest that we run each year for students in grades K through 12 uh -huh. all across the country. So it's open nationwide and it helps to teach the younger generation a little bit about quilting, uh -huh. let them express you know, their interest, their... Be creative. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. their creativity with the blocks and with a different art form. So we love displaying those blocks at the museum and then also bringing the ones that are animal friendly here to the show. Yes, mm -hmm. and you, these blocks now aren't necessarily quilted, are they? Not yet. We ask just for the tops for these blocks, so it's kind of a what we call a raw block that the, the edges it's, are still it, loose. And um, it, it's anything kind of goes in creativity with it, It right? does, yes. Yeah. So a lot of times the kids will then take them and finish them up so they end up being quilted oh, into pillows they? or things that they enter into state fairs or different competitions. Yeah, but tell us about the requirement about the materials on the school block. Yeah, they're, that's really the biggest rule that we have. Uh, the only thing that they really need to follow, uh, Moda Fabrics provides three challenge fabrics for us each year and we ship those packets out to anyone who wants to participate and the kids have to use a piece of each of those three prints mm -hmm. in their block. They can add anything else they want to it and you, it's Open really canvas. good. Yeah, it's really good to see what they create with what we give them. And the number of entries has been increasing, hasn't it? It has. Uh, each year we've gone up a little bit here and there, but this year we kind of blew past all of our previous marks. We have 316 quilt blocks, Ooh. which is almost double what we've ever had before. So wow. it's really exciting to see them all on exhibit and see what the kids have done with quilts and with fabric. Mm -hmm. Well, with that excitement, why don't we see the first quilt block that you brought for us? Excellent. Uh, this one is from our K through fourth grade category, uh -huh. and it's called Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, How I Wonder What You Are. Um, it's by Elizabeth Anthony from Pennsylvania, and she's participated before in the contest, so that's always really exciting when they repeat from year to year. Uh -huh. And you can see we've got this great blue Aww. fabric. This text print is one of our challenge prints, and she's really made good use of that as her background. Uh -huh. And she's got this great little polar bear looking up at some nighttime winter stars <laughs> hanging down. So she's really 
kept it simple, but really the focus that Bayer and those stars really stand out from the block, which is always really interesting mm -hmm. to see. Yeah. Right. And what's the size of that block in, in reality? Uh, these blocks are on average a 16 by 16 inch square, give or take a little bit, uh -huh. you know, under uh -huh. or over, mm -hmm. but that's what we want them to aim for. So nothing, you know, too this extraordinary, nothing that's too big for these kids to handle, because again, this is K through fourth grade. Right. So, you know, we start them young. But oh. get them interested, and they turn out, you know, really good work using machine stitching. And uh, this one's done on a sewing machine, so she's, you know, learning some of those skills as well. Yeah, but now they could them. have painted, or they could have glued, or done any kind of medium. As right? long as there's some stitching on the block somewhere, either by oh, machine somewhere. or by hand, they can then glue or add other materials, gotcha. other pieces. But we want them to at least experience a little bit, a of, little bit of sewing because little that's bit a of skill sewing. that <laughs> we feel is important, and we want to pass that on to the younger generations. I think that's Good. very wise. That, that is really clever. Yeah. And yeah. one thing that uh, we ran okay. into a couple years back, somebody had put a lot of glitter on ah. their block. So <laughs> that's the only thing oh, we don't allow okay. because right. you know what? Glitter is like fungus. You can't get rid of it. Oh, it goes and everywhere. it's not good around <laughs> quilts, right? No, because it will end up oh, everywhere. 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 No matter what. So, so. No, 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 no glitter. glitter. No, no glitter. sprinkle glitter. No loose glitter. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, and a little bit later when we look at some other quilt blocks, we'll talk about the different categories. You have K4 mm -hmm. and then the other categories, right. yep. uh, age groups that we have, too. We do. So. Okay. Well, well Judy, why, uh, why don't you show us uh, one of the quilts the that first, you brought your today? Your first quilt that you brought with us. Well, today. one of the fun things about quilting is just like with the school block challenge, uh -huh. a quilter can say anything, anything. with their mm -hmm. quilt. Right. And this quilt is actually an earlier quilt from the collection. It came into the collection in 1992. Uh -huh. um, and it's bed sized, sort of twin bed sized. Okay. And it's called Javanese Jungle. Oh. And I mean, Isn't there's an elephant and there's a zebra and there's <laughs> critters and there's birds. And, <laughs> And the, just everything, and uh -huh. the colors. She could. She used teal and oranges and gold, and it's just so fun. And when you actually see the quilt, you'll notice that the ear of the elephant is 3D. It, ah. The top part of the ear is attached to the quilt, but the rest of it hangs free. Oh, and that, okay. you know, it just like some of the seasoned quilters that come through our galleries look at those school blocks and they say. I could do that in my. They're right. inspired, really, yeah. by and the you quilt don't. Block. Yeah, oh. and it's just they could look at this quilt and get inspired about adding a 3D element to their their own quilt. Oh, yeah. I see. Now, is this machine stitched or hand? Hand. Oh, this is oh this is the old-fashioned yeah. kind. Yeah. And again, you said it's a, a what what size in feet would you say this oh, is? Oh, well, 74 by nine, 74 by 94 inches. Ooh, okay. All right. So even though it appears the same size on the screen, this this is a large quilt, right? Yeah. yeah. This is a big one. So yeah. that is lovely. Jap yeah. Javanese. I, I, I'm just amazed at the detail that these quilters can get into these quilts. Oh, I know. Yeah. I just can't the believe The number that of hours that it takes them to do that is just fascinating. They, it's really a love. Yeah. They, it, they, yeah. they love what they're doing. So. They're, the, they're the kind of people that go into a fabric store and walk around. Feeling the material? Feeling <laughs> I'm not yeah. a Becky's quilter, but I do that. that. We That's know. We do. <laughs> I, do, I do that. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Well, uh, well, I'll tell you, we've seen an example now of uh, some of the great come. things we're going to be yeah. seeing on the show. Right. And so we want to take a short break now and listen to a, a happy tale about a sweet little Siamese cat named Marlo. Oh. So give a listen. Laura and Robert were having dinner with Cindy and her husband in March of 2014. Cindy, a board member with the Marshall County Animal Shelter, knew that they loved Siamese cats. The next day, Cindy sent Laura a message that the shelter had a cat for adoption. Laura told Robert about the cat and he said he was going to get her. This would make a total of four Siamese cats in the house and Laura protested. All the way home, both petted the cat that was now named Marlo. Marlo gets along well with the other cats, all males, and has earned the nickname of Ghost because she likes to sneak outside. She and Harvey, a Dalmatian puppy in the home, are great buddies. 
Welcome back. We hope you enjoy that little uh, happy tale about Marlo. He's oh, a sweet, sweet little cat. So, uh, what we want to uh, at this point, Judy, would you tell our viewers some uh, information about the Quilt Museum? How can they get to it, and uh, what some of the hours of operation and things like that are? Well, we're right downtown at 215 Jefferson Street here in Paducah, mm -hmm. Kentucky. Can Paducah, <laughs> Kentucky? <laughs> yes. And our hours are 10 to 5, Monday through Saturday. Starting in March, we will be opening on Sunday from 1 to 5 Great. until the early winter. And if you need to call, the number is 270-442-8856. And the website, you can find a lot of things on the website, www.quiltmuseum.org. Okay. All right. So no one has an excuse. That's right. That's right. Not, being, not knowing how to do it That's and how right. to get there. So, well, uh, let's uh, at this point look at some more of the quilts let's that you brought with quilts. us, Judy. Oh, okay. Now, one of the things about quilting is that groups will learn or decide to make quilts together, and this is a really wonderful quilt made that way. And okay. This, this is called Ms. McDonald Had a Farm by the Hanging by a Thread Quilt Group. They're all out of Washington State. Oh. And. I love this quilt. Everybody, <laughs> Everybody loves, loves this loves quilt. This quilt. <laughs> and one of the things that I think is cool about it is that the part in the lower left, there's this cow and there's a little birdie that's on the back of the cow. Oh. So it's so realistic. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the, there's kitties and a lamb and a, and a dog and a, and a rooster. And they've used such wonderful fabrics to create this. It was designed by uh, Bonnie Keller, who's a member of the group, and then 12 members got together and learned the technique, the fusing oh. techniques to make this quilt. And then they made their blocks and then it was all put together and then they, they quilted it. Fabulous, fabulous design. Mm -hmm. You just want to take all those animals home with you. And yeah. is this machine or hand? This is done by the machine oh, and using fusing, fusing techniques. Fusing techniques, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of adhesive, you know. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. But it's fun. Love the title, Ms. McDonald had a blast. Yes, Ms. McDonald. <laughs> what do we have next? Uh, oh, me? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're doing quilts. We're doing quilts. Puffins. Oh. Now, it's funny because so many people go, oh, look at the penguins. But no, <laughs> these are puffins. Shirley Kelly is in, from Colden, New York, and we have a number of quilts by her, and she is renowned for doing animals. Uh -huh. And this is her puffins quilt. I believe we've showed this before, but... It's lovely. It's mm -hmm. fu so fun to come back to. And yes. it's like, and puffins do congregate in groups. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And all these puffins are doing what puffins do. And there's one puffin that's kind of looking right at the viewer, kind of going, <laughs> what are you doing here? You know, we're doing our thing, leave us alone, you know. And Shirley has retired. She was an art teacher in the Colden School District for 30-some-odd uh -huh. years, and she just loves doing animals. Oh, wow. She's quite the, quite the artist. Wow. This is hand appliqued and machine quilted. Okay. It's beautiful. And it's you just want to touch it, but I know you, you're not no, supposed no, to. No, no, no. At the Quilt Museum, <laughs> no, you can do, do not touch. Right? No, the volunteers leap across the gallery to tackle you if That's you That's right. You <laughs> get tackled if you try. <laughs> yeah. I have the scars to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this is an earlier quilt, and you know, we can't leave the fishermen out. Uh, absolutely mm -hmm. not. You know, fisher, fisher animals too. So this is called Serenity 2, Life in My Pond. Okay. Oh, and so tra and it, it is a lovely quilt, and it's uh, by Donna Duchesne Garofalo. This is from, oh, the early 90s, uh -huh. and it's a wonderful example of how you can frame a quilt without putting an actual border on uh -oh. the quilt. It's kind of, it, it, there's kind of a floating frame in the design. and. You know, when I, if you've ever been around fish that do leap out of the water from yes, the flies, yes, uh -huh. you never forget it. Mm -hmm. right. And this, this always yes. brings it to mind when I see this quilt leaping up for all the, you know, the, fl the flies. Yes. Time for lunch. Okay. Then we have another quilt, I all believe. Right. This one's Ooh. a big hit. And this is the one from France. Uh, Inga Mardal and Steen Haugs were living in France at the time she made this. And what she does is she's a nature photographer. Uh -huh. And then she, she will project the image onto a piece of whole cloth, 
draw what she wants to pull out, and then she paints it with a paint called set a color. And then you use a hot iron to set the color. Mm, then she wow. machine quilts it with colored threads to accent and bring out oh. different parts of the quilt. Um, it, I just, it's huge. I mean, you think bird and you think something, you know, 14, right. 16 mm -hmm. inches yeah. tall, maybe a little big like that. This is 66 by 80 inches. Wow. This is a, this is a big bird. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, this is big bird. Yeah. Yes. So it's, it's, it's one that people look at and go, I can't believe this is a quilt. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. astounded. I always. can't believe the methodology behind it, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's really but it's got the technical. Th yeah, it's got the three layers, you know, the top, uh -huh. the backing, and the batting, and the quilting holding it together. So uh -huh. technically, it's a quilt. Well, it is very interesting. Oh, absolutely. So, okay. And, and our last one, I think. The last one. Oh, now, you know, okay, you have your family pets. Right. Mm -hmm. And they say that a cat accompanied somebody scaling, I don't know, Mount Everest or something. Maybe it was Kilimanjaro. Well, this is about the dog, Seaman, who it went with. Lewis and Clark oh, really? on their journey oh, that accompanied, okay. you know, Lewis and Clark. Right. And when Cassandra Williams made this quilt, the map makers, she has, you know, a map. She has the, the different kinds of abodes the Indians right. lived in, but she included the dog. The dog. And oh. I think that's fabulous. <laughs> oh, that and, is. And he's just kind of there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> you know. Uh -huh. But, I mean, you know, who, if somebody says to you, I want you to walk with me across this continent. Yes, and you no go, one's, we haven't been there before. Yeah, <laughs> you you go in a panic. How am I going to do this? I'm like, uh, uh. you take your dog with you, and they just go. They just go. Yeah. They just go. They're happy. They're yeah. with you. They're good. <laughs> wow. And so you know, and we have statues in front of the museum of Lewis and Clark, mm -hmm. and. Seaman, we have a Seaman statue in front of the museum too. Oh, okay. So people just have to come to Paducah, Kentucky, and see it That's all, right. don't they? Absolutely. It's all special at the quilt museum. Absolutely. Well, Judy, this is just what a, a nice collection. A fabulous set of quilts that you brought with you today, and and the pictures, of course, and and uh, we sure do appreciate that. You're and welcome. We want to take a quick break now and listen to another happy tale. Mm -hmm. This one is about Harvey, a sweet it's little dog. Dalmatian dog. Give a listen. is a male Dalmatian puppy with light colored spots that came to the Herndon family in 2014 from the Murray Calloway County Animal Shelter. The family had two female Dalmatians in the past and wanted a male Dalmatian this time. Harvey was spotted at a shelter adoption event by Robert's mother and she called Laura to tell her about the puppy. Harvey is a friendly puppy with lots of energy and he gets along with the six cats that also live in the family home. Harvey is a Dalmatian mix because he has light spots instead of the usual black ones. He's great buddies with Marlo, one of the four Siamese cats in the home. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that little show with, uh, uh, with Harvey. He's a, a, quite a little character. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> And he needs to be in a quilt sometime. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Becky, would you kind of remind our viewers how they can get to the Quilt Museum and about it? Sure. Where's we are downtown in Paducah, Kentucky. We're right by the river, so it's a great excursion to come out down yes, to 215 is. Jefferson Street. And we'll be talking with the school block, so you can also find information about the contest on our website, which is quiltmuseum.org. And they can go to the contest tab and find out how to enter and get their kids sewing for next year. Oh, great. And you've got some wonderful examples, so let's get to it. So let's we get do. to some more quilt blocks. <laughs> yes, because we had so many this year, we had more participants than we've had in the past. We had over 520 kids that participated, and we had 14 states from across the country represented. So, wow. of course, a lot from Kentucky, of Illinois. Uh, you'll see a lot of Illinois blocks. We usually get Tennessee and Missouri that come through, but we also have states like Texas and Arkansas and New Jersey and Maryland and Idaho that participate from year to year, so that's always that's exciting. Great to see where it travels to. Um, our next quilt block that we've got coming up is from here in Paducah, Kentucky, one of our local elementary schools. It's called Super Giraffe, 
And it's, you can see this giraffe here. And at first, you take a look at the eyes and go, what is, you know, what's across <laughs> its eyes? And then you realize it's a, like a superhero mask, that bright green there. And she's added a little cape. Um, this is from Maya from Clark Elementary. And she's got some great decorative stitches that are holding all the different pieces together with her little son uh, behind the giraffe and just really had a lot of fun <laughs> creating this great character oh, to yes. go with it. So that one's been pretty neat. Plus the tail is 3D. She's taken some embroidery oh. floss and braided that tail and then stitched that on so that kind of hangs free oh, on the block itself, which Very is a lot creative. of fun. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Our next block is also part of our K through fourth grade category, the way we separate out our blocks. K through four. And this one's just lovely. It's called Marin's Misty of Chincoteague. And it's by Marin, uh, Marin Green from Murfreesboro, Illinois. And she's obviously inspired by the book Misty of Chincoteague with these two horses and just really created this great landscape with her grass fabric and the blue text print for the sky. And then she's got some like animal fur kind of fabrics. So it's a 3D kind of a plush fabric for the mane mm -hmm. and the tails of these horses. It really stands out to go with it. Our next block jumps into our next category. We separate the fifth through eighth grade blocks, so pretty much our middle school kids. And this one's called Captain Jack. And we've got this cute <laughs> little black cat. It's their family pet. That's the cat's Aww. name. And so our quilter, Ellie Belcher, uh, from Lexington has used little buttons to spell out the name of the cat across the collar. So you can see those read Jack Aww. there. And has had some fun finding sparkly buttons for the eyes to go with it. So they find all sorts of little accessories to uh -huh. add to their block mm -hmm. in addition to the fabrics uh -huh. to go with it. And again, that fifth through eighth grade category is usually our largest number of entries is to it? go with it. So our next one deals with a little less of the household um, animals. This one is a fish that we've got. It's called Splash of Color by Erin uh, from Benton, Kentucky. She's a homeschool student, uh -huh. so we do welcome homeschoolers as well as traditional schooling. And she's got some great buttons and just this little frame like you're looking into the, an aquarium Aww. of a fish to see the little details as well. And from there, we move to zebras in the Amazon. Oh. Um, or uh, this one's actually called Roar. I'm <laughs> sorry, this one doesn't have the zebra on. It's got all the other jungle animals right. to go with it. You <laughs> see the lion there, the flamingo. We've got a hippo on a block. Um, we've got an elephant down there. There's a lot of hand stitching on this block, so a lot of uh, thought going into stitching those yes. pieces down as well. This is from our high school category. Uh, we do 9th through 12th grade, and this is from uh, Julia and Rachel from Madison, Alabama. Mm -hmm. So that's really exciting to see some different creativity to go with their yes. blocks, adding <laughs> those hand-stitched details. I like the idea of a flamingo roaring. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Oh. It is something a little bit different yeah. to go. But next up... Um, We've got this, lions were pretty popular this year. As you can see, we've got this really bold faced lion here, some bright colors for the mane to go with it. This one's called The Lion That Ate the Mouse by Jacob from Columbia, <laughs> Illinois. So looks pretty much like a happy lion, I would <laughs> say, <laughs> if he's caught that mouse to go with it, but really, really putting mm. that lion right there in the front. So lots of jungle animals have come through. Uh -huh. um, I know we've got another one hiding in our next quilt block. Um, as well to go with it. So we can move on to that. And we'll see what comes up uh, with our dolphin theme from our middle school category. You can see they've put the date across the top. We've got some palm trees. The dolphin's leaping out of the water, so they've added some paints to give that the splash effect uh -huh. of the dolphin leaping out. So we get a lot of beach scenes typically. Uh -huh. um, this one is called A Day at the Beach by Jessica and Kalia from Columbia, Illinois again as well. So several students from the same school that have participated, which we always like when teachers include the whole class uh, mm -hmm. instead of just homeschool families or maybe a scout troop or you know 4-H uh -huh. clubs and things like that. Mm -hmm. There's some machine stitching on this one as well. So they're getting familiar with maybe something that they've never experienced before, even in fifth through eighth grade that they've got, or ninth through 12 that they're using sewing machines, they're using irons, you know, it's something that Maybe they've, maybe their parents don't <laughs> sew. So this is a new skill that they're learning, which is a lot of fun. Then nobody irons anymore. Yeah. Right, and very few so. people sew. <laughs> it's true. So we like that they're learning something new, but also expressing themselves, as you could have seen in all these blocks <laughs> and in the next block as well, as that comes up. Um, we've got some different animals that are always showcased because kids and animals go together. Oh yes, they do. You know, really, really well. So they always have a lot of fun. 
putting those blocks together, you know, creating what they want with those three challenge fabrics that we ask them to use in each of their blocks. Um, and it's just a lot of fun to see what they create. We don't put any theme on it, so we want the kids to create. We want them to express their ideas or take inspiration from their pets or what they're learning about or reading in school or at home or just something that inspires them mm -hmm. to be creative. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, we get a lot of detail. Yeah. Yes, you certainly do. Now, now a, a person can do this by themselves mm -hmm. or they can do it as a group, is that right? That is correct. Um, some of these blocks were done by maybe two students, some of them maybe it's a group of five, maybe it's the whole class. We've had whole classrooms of 23 kids working on one block together. Oh, wow. So it depends on the teacher, you know, however they decide to put it together, but you know, we want them. We want them to learn. We want them to experience quilting, and we want to showcase their work. You know, we we put mm -hmm. the quilts up in the galleries so our regular visitors see them, and they walk through. They're blown away, whether they're quilters or not. That students in grades K through 12 have made these quilt blocks. Mm -hmm. They've stitched them either by hand or learned on the machine how to put it all together. And, but you also mm -hmm. put up these quilt blocks at the museum oh, yeah. For, yeah. for people to see, right? Oh yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So there's a display for quilt blocks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the winning blocks are put up on the website. So you can see which ones have won to go with that, uh -huh. but okay. we do ex display them physically in the building as well. Yeah, and yeah. there are many more quilt blocks than just with animal themes, but yes. we're only showing today <laughs> quilts and, and blocks with the animal themes. Correct. So you <laughs> have to come to Paducah, Kentucky to see the rest, right? That, yes, you <laughs> have to come on down, see what the kids have created. If you can't make it here, at least check it out online, see what you know this year's winners have done. Yeah. Good and, idea. And the interesting thing will be to see if uh, some of these blocks actually wind up as actual quilts. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, that would be a that yeah. would be a, a very interesting thing to uh, to see. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I tell you, you two have just brought us a <laughs> wonderful wealth of Colorful creativity, information. Yes, yes, on the part of the quilters and the kids and. It, uh, this is one of the fun shows we do every oh, year. Oh, yes. <laughs> it is a fun show. We have a lot of fun. Because yeah. <laughs> we can uh, get, get a chance to see how creative people can be. So, unfortunately, we're beginning to run out of time. <laughs> but, uh, That's the way this, it is. <laughs> we want to thank the both of you again for coming. And, thank you so much and for sharing coming again. Uh, the, mm -hmm. these neat things with us. And, and uh, we we'll look Keep forward to. Keep up the good to, work. Yes, we'll look forward to seeing you back again oh, yeah. in the Sounds future. Good. So, yeah. okay, well, Darlene. Uh, we've Ty, reached just, the end again. I know, it just goes so fast. Yes, and uh, so th uh, we would like to just remind our viewers that what we tell you every time, give your pet a little extra love today and, and every, every day. day. See you next time. Visit the Quilt Museum. Bye.